Ladies and gents, welcome to GVX, and this is the 1918 flu pandemic emergence exercise part one by the channel Extra Credits. Yes, yeah, the Spanish flu. I mean, yeah, this is uh, this is gonna hit quite close to home because what we went through yesterday, even though it it was probably much deadlier. But yeah, at the time, obviously, the World War One was going on. There was no lockdown, so that could be the reason it was uh, much deadlier than what we had. But yeah. Between 3 and 6% of the world's population died in 18 months. 3 and 6% of the world population. When the flu first tried to take over the world. In today's episode, we explore the flu's outbreaks, origin from military camps across the United States and... Ca what? It originated in America? Huh. Well, let's watch this one. Remember, if you like my example, if you like subscribe, check out the Rick Sunday. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards for the plays, like history with all my historical videos, like extra credits, video reactions, and all the other history videos. Uh, all is actually production, or simplified, internet historian, CGP Gray. And yeah, let's watch this one. September 1918, Camp Devons, Massachusetts. The man on the autopsy table has turned blue. Dr. William H. Welch nods to proceed. His colleagues reach for the bone saw and begin to open the rib cage. The man's lungs are heavy. Welch and his colleagues lean in as they're opened. The lungs are so full of fluid that it's traveled up the trachea. The man had drowned in his own body, just like the others. Welch needs air. He opens the door and stumbles around men lying on the floor. There are no longer enough beds in the hospital. 6,000 men crammed in a facility meant for 1,200 and they're turning blue. Yeah, even though what we had yesterday, uh, last year uh, was not as, uh, you know, heavy as this, it was kind of similar, right? Lots of clinics, uh, emergency wards and people went through this. You could see videos of lots of people who are basically almost depressed and panicking, doctors and everybody, just because of the numbers, how many were coming and how many of them were dying, they couldn't save them. I mean, that must take a massive psychological to toll on people's mind. So, I could, look, we were in lockdown in our houses, right? Some of us, uh, pro some of us in our families suffered uh, great loss. So, obviously, they know it. But lots of people who didn't suffer uh, any loss, but were just in lockdown. We really have no comprehension when it comes to what it was like. Doctors do, all the social workers do, because they were living it. For months when there was a lockdown, people who, there, there was a video I remember from, I guess, Italy, where some guy was saying that, you know, his sister was sick, uh, she was in her bed in, in the room, that one day she suddenly stopped responding, and then he soon realized that she died, and she was like there for days, because no emergency response was coming to take, and her dead body was just there while he was filming the video, that was so grim, right, that just shows how after the scenario was, Italy and everywhere, damn. And this uh, Spanish flu probably killed many, many millions, like 10, 20 million plus. So it must have been even more grim. This is a horror story, one of the most frightening in history. In 1918, a new disease emerged. We Wait a minute, why did YouTube stop showing the date of the video? Why is there no date here? Or did this shift it? I don't know. But this video is probably long before last year's pandemic. This is from what, 2017 or something? I'm pretty sure. People don't know exactly how or where it first began infecting humans, but within months, it would spread across the planet from the trenches of the Western Front to the most remote villages on Earth. It infected a third of the world's population and killed between 50 and 100 million people. To put that in perspective, the low estimate would make it twice as deadly as World War I, while the high estimate would mean it killed more than both world wars combined. 50 to 100 million, even I didn't thought of that. Holy shit. Between 3 and 6% of the global population died within 18 months. It was the first modern plague, turning our interconnected world against us by spreading through shipping lanes, rail lines, and the arteries of industrialized war. Yet it was also the first pandemic of the scientific age, where doctors could, to some extent, understand what was happening and stand against the infection, though they lacked the tools to stop it. So yeah. in 1918, while researchers couldn't really see viruses, they knew such things must exist. They had no idea that, unlike the bacteria they could see in their microscopes, flu was not alive in any way humans understood it. Just a bunch of unstable genetic material that possessed a cell, forcing it to pump out billions of copies of itself. And with each cell infected, a minority of those new viruses mutated into something more infectious, more deadly. 
a microorganism that, through the randomness of natural selection, became progressively better at catching and killing as it passed through each host. In its wake, it altered a world war. <clears throat> See, that's the thing. Uh, when it comes to viruses like this, it's just a living organism that is trying to stay alive. And it does any means necessary through natural selection and, you know, mutation to stay alive, which is really bad news for us. You know, usually it's, uh, you know, it's not as deadly as Spanish flu and what we had last year. But sometimes, it you know, viruses goes extreme and becomes that deadly on human hosts. It's, it's just trying to survive. If it kills its host, it's not going to survive. So, you know, killing the host is not the goal, but obviously that's what it results in. Drove languages extinct and shattered the sense of invulnerability that modern medicine had begun to cultivate. And when the nightmare ended, the world did what any person does when they wake from a dream. It forgot. But forgetting is something we can't afford, because the virus that ravaged the world in 1918 is still out there, still mutating, and it will return. Take Yet, a number. Despite its impacts, we still don't know where the pandemic originated. But there are theories. Canada, 1917. Canada? A train races across the plains. Military guards are instructed- It originated in Canada? Usually it's somewhere in Europe or most of the time it's from China. Canada, that's weird. To keep civilians away from the locomotive. If they see what's inside, there may be a riot. These cars, designed for cattle, contain the men of the Chinese Labor Corps. Pawns uh. in a political gambit. Until recently, the young, fragile Republic of China had remained neutral in the First World there War. You go. With so many foreign countries holding territory within its borders, joining the conflict risks making their homeland a battleground. But neutrality was not tenable. Japan, one of the allies, had used the war as pretext to move troops into Chinese territory and demand control of the Chinese government. To thread the political needle, China had declared war on Germany. Hopefully, the other allies will now protect China from Japanese aggression and give it a seat at yeah, the- Yeah, I'm like, it originated from Canada? No, it, it came from China, from the Chinese troops. Post-war negotiating table. It may even get its occupied territory back. But to maintain a shred of neutrality, these Chinese recruits are barred from combat. They would dig trenches, lug ammunition, and clear minefields. So here they are, shipped to Canada, crammed on train cars, and traveling overland to a troop ship in Halifax. But there's something else among them. A respiratory disease that had ravaged northern China the previous year. A winter sickness severe enough that some victims coughed blood and turned blue. First, one recruit begins to cough, then another. One by one, they fall ill with splitting headaches and chills. Damn. Crammed into the cattle cars, there's nowhere to run nowhere to isolate the sick. They beg the guards to let them get off and seek medical attention. But due to the rampant anti-Chinese sentiment in Canada, the guards have their orders to keep the passengers a secret. By the time they reach Halifax, 3,000 have to be placed in quarantine. Doctors give the sick nothing but castor oil for sore throats and load the rest of the recruits onto the troop ships for France. Those men aren't sick. Yet. But flu victims are contagious days before presenting symptoms, meaning the British Empire has just delivered pandemic flu to the trenches. If that is, it was flu. Because another emergence is about to occur in what? the unlikeliest of places. March 4th, 1918. Camp Funston, Kansas. Like every military base in America, Camp Funston is overcrowded. The second largest training center in the country, Funston's 56,000 men live in barracks and tents, each waiting to be rotated to duty in the US or France. Diseases always break out when- 56,000 in barracks. I mean, that's a lot of people, right? I mean, we're getting whole, you know, plane of barracks and things, that must be a lot. Recruits muster for war. So it's no surprise when a private, a cook no less, reports for sick call with influenza. By noon, 107 other soldiers have joined him. Within three weeks, it'll be over 1,100. Alarming, sure, but this is wartime. Camp outbreaks happen. Even as 20% of the patients develop pneumonia and 38 die, doctors see nothing abnormal. But they're missing a key piece of the puzzle. A month before... Yeah, I mean, uh, during the time of crisis, like war and things, uh, usually, you know, uh, diseases come when it's a really bad condition where people are living in. You know, hygiene is not maintained, you know, people are not getting proper nutrition. It's implied that, you know, your immune system is not strong enough, diseases usually come and go. That's why whenever you see some kind of, uh, you know, centuries ago, and there is sieges and things like that, and, you know, some people ravage towns and um, entire, you know, c cities and whatever. Plagues are, you know, a common thing because, you know, conditions are not right at that point. 
or and 300 miles away, the lone doctor in Haskell County, Kansas, had watched flu kill dozens of his strongest, healthiest patients. Its rapid pace and high fatality rate alarmed him so much that he contacted the public health service and published an alert in the National Health Journal, but no one listened. The paper's obituary page was unusually busy that February, but alongside the reports of death and illness were heartwarming articles. Soldiers from Haskell County were departing for boot camp or visiting home one last time before deployment, all headed to Camp Funston and from there to France. So basically that was equivalent to if what happened last year, people didn't take seriously. And there was reports of something like this spreading in the newspaper, but also there was also a, a news of some cat or something. Like how a bear is hugging a cat. Oh, isn't that cute? Two weeks after the first case at Funston, 10% of recruits were reporting sick at two camps in Georgia. By the end of the month, 24 of the 36 largest military bases in America had cases, along with 30 major cities. No one noticed. Yet. Army Medical Department, Washington, D.C. Dr. William H. Welch was tracking an epidemic. One of the country's most famous doctors, Welch had helped drag American medicine into the modern age. He helped found the John Hopkins School of Medicine, spread the use of microscopes, and organized the Rockefeller Institute, the country's first dedicated medical laboratory. His work had helped transform America from a nation of country doctors to a titan of scientific medicine, able to compete with the Pasteur Institute in France and the Koch Institute in Berlin. Because of him, America had joined the age of the microscope and the vaccine. This one guy did all that shit, that's heavy. I mean, obviously, around World War I and before that, uh, Germany was a powerhouse when it comes to science, scientific uh, area. So obviously, you know, it's, uh, all the, you know, big institutions would be in Germany and France and everywhere in Europe. But I guess this is the guy who had pulled the USA at the toe-to-toe -to -toe scenario. That's big, man. A bright world where doctors could both see diseases and kill them. The last few decades had brought vaccines for smallpox, rabies, anthrax, diphtheria, and meningitis. Researchers at the Rockefeller Institute were taking the first steps towards limb reattachment and organ transplantation. Some optimists even predicted a future without communicable disease. And America needed that scientific power now more than ever. Even before the war, Welch delivered a message to the Army Surgeon General. When mobilization happens, you'll have an epidemic. You'll need to recruit the best doctors and microbiologists. You'll need researchers, train cars outfitted as mobile research laboratories, a stockpile of vaccines and antitoxins, anything to be ready. When the war started, the Surgeon General didn't bother recruiting Welch and his researchers. He just enfolded the Rockefeller Institute into the army. And here it was, the epidemic that Welch had feared. He could see it. War. War is everything. Guns, soldier, uniform, taking things by force. That's the main thing. All this medical bullshit can come later. Let's just, you know, basically infuse it in our army. Yeah, let's not take the guy seriously. It's all about war. Defeating the enemy. Moving on the map from camp to camp, and it had killed nearly 6,000 already. He'd sent researchers to chart its spread and battle the secondary cases of pneumonia that were the real killer in most epidemics. They'd all warned the army that this would happen if they overcrowded the camps. But no one listened. Welch had dispatched an experimental vaccine that fought one form of bacterial pneumonia, as well as a serum that cut the death rates by half. Results of the test looked good, if not 100% effective. It was proving a successful response. But there was a problem. Because the epidemic that Welch was fighting to contain wasn't flu. It was measles. He'd seen reports of influenza spreading too, but influenza was seasonal, something that was expected and would go away. Doctors weren't even obligated to report cases to the public health service. So the prospect of a measles outbreak seemed much more serious, especially with recruits grouped together in training camps and 36,000 of the nation's doctors deployed in France. So as Welch fought measles, infected American troops boarded troop ships. They packed into the holds until each converted ocean liner held twice the normal load of passengers. They pulled away from the dock, waving farewell to families and loved ones on shore and turned towards Europe. Damn. It was in the bloodstream now, not just of the men, but of the world. Damn, that's grim. The guy thought, oh no, it's not influenza, it's measles, and it was just attacking that. I mean, obviously, like I said in the, one of the previous videos, hindsight is a, you know, a thing that not everybody has, most people don't have. We could easily sit here and think, oh, what an idiot, right? He should have seen the influenza and should have done something, but no, man, right? At the time, influenza was common, it's seasonal, why would you think that it's that, right? Of course, he's gonna think it's something like measles, because the world war was going on, he needed to stop some disease, and he's gonna go through the charts, like, what could it be? 
that is so devastating that having this effect he's not gonna think oh it's the uh, you know muted strain or the influenza and it's, it's a spanish flu or something so you know obviously he didn't have a hindsight because nobody would but that's just effed up right because what he thought that you know it can't be just influenza because it's seasonal was that and it just i guess spread it now through the world war it's gonna spread everywhere through trenches and everything holy shit I mean, that is just effed up. <clears throat> I don't know as a virus how strong influenza is compared to what we had last year. I, I like to think influenza was much stronger, just depending on the numbers. But it might not. It might be similar, right? We didn't have, we didn't have world war, you know, last year. Uh, we also had lockdowns and things, and we also had modern medicine and tools to detect things. I mean, all of in 1918, people were running around in confusion while it was spreading. They didn't even know what's happening. So that could be the reason behind the numbers, but who knows. Alright, that was 1918 flu pandemic emergence by the channel Next Show Credits. If you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe. Check out the weeks and There's a link in the description with all of my videos. Not everything has playlists, so check out the link. Uh, check out the, you know, card for all the playlists, like history with all my historical videos like this from, from these channels like this. Uh, other playlists too, like Oli Sagashi Production or Simplified, Internet Historian, CGP Grey. I created playlists so it's easier. Because I react to lots of shit, right? It's uh, hard for you, hard for people to find specific type of things. So I created all the playlists for it. So check that out. And yeah, I'll see you next time.